Ryu, the iconic mascot of the legendary Street Fighter brand. This simple designed, Hadouken throwing white gi wearing martial artist is the most popular character that the franchise has ever produced. While this is the case, this has not stopped Capcom on multiple occasions from positioning a different character as the star of a Street Fighter game. We have already talked at length in the past on the failure of Alex from Street Fighter 3, or more recently, the annoying TikTok dancing antics of Street Fighter 6's Luke, a combatant who many fans have noticed draws a lot of parallels with Itchy and Scratchy's Poochie the Dog. But although neither of these fighters could ever displace Ryu, another entry in the series Street Fighter 4 would bring to the table a main protagonist who was so boring that it wouldn't surprise me at all if a lot of people had forgotten this loser even existed. That's right, for today's upload we are going to go back and look at the history of a character who is surely no one out there's favourite. In my opinion, an evening at home watching the radio is more entertaining than this guy. So with all that said, hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. This is the story of Mr. Personality himself, Abel, a Street Fighter main protagonist who fouled hard. Yeah. While Alex was essentially created and designed to function as the Hulk Hogan of the Street Fighter universe, I have often joked on here about how he ended up becoming more of a Lex Luger failing to replace Ryu as the franchise's star attraction, making the so-called new generation look less proficient as a whole. So, if Alex is Street Fighter's Lex Luger, what would that make Abel? The franchise's Tom McGee? Then again, at least old McGee had some interesting moves for a big man. I'd say Abel is more of a Street Fighter equivalent to Vladimir Kozlov, a main eventer who was so poorly positioned they would be forced to turn him into a joke character. You see, I think Abel is the kind of guy who is so boring that if a person stole his identity, they would give it back. But as vanilla as this man's exterior is, am I just being ableist? Let's explore this fighter in detail and see if we are able to find out. The arrival of Street Fighter 4 in 2008 would deliver a title drastically different from Street Fighter 3, which had seen release nearly a decade prior. Street Fighter 3 was a 2D game made in a 3D era, which featured a roster consisting of mostly newcomers. Street Fighter 4, on the other hand, featured a modern graphical style and featured everyone's favourites from the iconic Street Fighter 2. The game felt both modern and nostalgic at the same time, leading it to sell like hotcakes. Street Fighter 4 was exactly what the audience wanted, a Street Fighter 2-like game for the current generation, which meant that for the game's initial incarnation at least, new roster members are extremely limited, with the game's story plot essentially being written to re-establish M. Bison as the franchise's main villain. Which raises the question, how does Abel fit into all of this? And how could Capcom possibly consider him Street Fighter 4's main protagonist? Let's try and make sense of this. According to the main story's canon, prior to the events of Street Fighter 2, M. Bison ordered the creation of at least 26 androids by Sin, the weapons division of Shadaloo. One of these androids, named Seth, was chosen to be the new head of Sin, and after M. Bison's death in Street Fighter 2, Seth would begin making his own attempt to achieve world domination. M. Bison learns of this and has his soul supplanted into a new body and goes on a quest to stop the android who has renounced his mindless servitude. While all this is going on, another of M. Bison's androids has also begun to develop self-awareness, Abel. With Seth functioning as Street Fighter 4's final boss, I guess this was a good enough reason for Capcom to consider his more well-meaning brother the main protagonist in his games. By the way, with Seth and Abel being a clear biblical reference, this makes me wonder, where is Kane? Seth, Abel, and the other androids, with one of them likely being named Kane, were all genetically engineered to serve as potential replacement bodies for M. Bison. Most of these androids were deemed complete failures by Shadaloo, so would be quickly disposed of, but it is said that Abel was able to survive and escape. Like Kami and the Shadaloo dolls, before he was an android, Abel was said to be a regular human who M. Bison handpicked to be kidnapped and genetically engineered. According to Street Fighter lore, five years prior to the events of Street Fighter 4, Abel was found in an abandoned Shadaloo warehouse, suffering from amnesia. An unnamed soldier would nurse him back to good health and train him, with this soldier heavily being implied to be Charlie Nash. One would imagine the writers of Street Fighter 4 were likely Dragon Ball Z fans, as a lot of similarities can be seen between Abel and Android 16, an android from the anime who developed self-awareness who, although created to destroy, decides to fight for good. 
Another easy parallel that can be drawn between the two is that they are both tall, imposing figures who quickly discover that they are animal lovers, with Abel choosing to take in a puppy. From here, he chooses to embark on a journey of self-discovery, with the hopes it would give him inspiration to find a name to give to his furry chum. On this quest, he meets Chun-Li, who upon learning of his connections to Shadaloo, recommends he joins the Sin Fighting Tournament in order to learn more about his mysterious past. Abel obliges with it quickly transpiring that Chun-Li was right, as secrets are unearthed for the combatant thanks to gaining the opportunity to square off with Guile. Abel notices that Guile's fighting style and background is very similar to that of the man who nursed him back to good health previously. This leads to Guile connecting the dots and concluding that Abel must have known Charlie Nash. After all, who else can do the sonic boom? As for Abel's fighting style in combat, Abel uses an extremely aggressive technique consisting of combat sambo, which is already a combination of Russian judo with military elements, which are then further combined with various different MMA styles. Abel thus utilizes a lot of open palm strikes, rising elbow strikes and kicks. As a grappler, Abel also has an array of moves that allow him to chain techniques into throws. Abel is very strong but requires to get close to win a fight, with him fortunately having enough manoeuvres under his belt to make this possible. Abel is fantastic at keeping opponents on their toes and taking advantage of them when they make a mistake. The Abel we were getting in Street Fighter 4 would end up being very different to the character who was first conceptualised for the game. Originally, Abel was intended to take the form of a small boy with great judo skills, but would evolve over time to become the Abel we know today. Some have noticed that Abel's final design may have been inspired by Russian MMA expert Fedor Emelianenko, as well as French judo champion David Dulet. Abel, in fact, wears an exact replica of the Kurtka and gloves worn by Fedor, but with the Russian flag colours being misordered to become French ones. Now, as mentioned, many find this character a tad dull, which is not surprising really considering he is a literal android. But it seems clear that if we were to get to know him a bit, he is less emotionally detached than one would expect, with him in reality being a compassionate animal lover. Speaking of more layers to Abel's personality, apparently he is a big fan of martial arts movies. This is illustrated by the honour he feels when gaining the opportunity to step in the ring with Fei Long. In fact, it appears he may be a pro wrestling fan too, with him and Zangief becoming good friends. After Abel makes his way through the tournament to meet tournament host Seft himself, he is joined at the Sin headquarters by Chun-Li and Guile, who he met earlier in his journey. Guile is there to rescue Chun-Li from a trap set by Vega, which leaves Abel to fight Seth. This is the first time that Abel notices that he and Seth look alike. Seth enjoys fighting Abel with him noticing that mysterious memories are flooding back to him as they do combat. This doesn't last long though as M. Bison appears behind him, telling him there is no need to remember such trivial nonsense, with M. Bison telling Seth he is a miserable failure. M. Bison is impressed with Abel and compliments him for growing, informing him that they shall meet again. M. Bison simply allows Abel to leave for unknown reasons. After the events of the tournament though, Abel tells Chun-Li that he is departing on another adventure to try and learn more answers. Moving past the Street Fighter 4 games, Abel's next appearance of note would occur in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, where like other characters in the game, he is in search of Pandora. For Abel, his goal lines up exactly with what he wants to achieve in the main Street Fighter canon, with him hoping that by finding it, he can learn more about his past. In this tag team game, he teams up with Guile with some interesting moments occurring along the way. These include the pairing facing off against Hihachi and Kuma, with Kuma quickly drawing Abel's attention. In fact, Abel is able to strike a deal with Hihachi, stating that if he and Guile can defeat them, then he should get to take Kuma. Despite hilariously neither Guile or Kuma approving of this, the contest takes place. A running joke through the game is that other characters think Abel wants to eat Kuma, when the reality is he just wanted to pet him. If players are able to beat the game with this pairing, after finding Pandora's box, it opens by itself with a flying saucer appearing above it. It begins beaming down aliens who look like bears. Abel is captivated by their cuteness, leaving Gaal perplexed with him walking off face palming. Up until today, this would be the final time Abel has been playable. However, he would play a role as part of a story within Street Fighter V. In Guile's story in the game, for example, it is said that Abel was injured by Fang, M. Bison's henchman who has replaced Sagat in the organisation. 
After recovering, Abel and Guy explore the old Sin laboratory together, where they unearth Bison's plans for Operation Chains, a plan to give M. Bison more psycho power than ever before, allowing him to take over the world. In the main story known as the Shadow Falls, where Operation Chains actually takes place, Abel works as an undercover foot soldier within Shadaloo in order to aid Chun-Li and Karin. While working in this position, thanks to his previous engineering at the hands of M. Bison, Bison's enhanced psycho powers allow him to gain influence over Abel's body, with Abel losing control of himself. He turns on both Chun-Li and Karin as a result, but is soon stopped in his tracks through taking a mean spinning pile driver at the hands of Zangi. This allows them to take Abel to a safe location. Once back at Karin's estate, Guile and a revived Charlie Nash try to hold him off, with Charlie successfully absorbing the psycho power controlling his old friend. Abel thanks Charlie for freeing him, with Abel remaining at the estate to recover. He is not seen for the rest of the story though, or ever again for that matter either. All of this probably has you thinking that maybe I am mistaken, and that Abel was never considered to be a main character in Street Fighter. But an event as recent as November of 2021 would all but further confirm this. Street Fighter VI director Nakayama referenced this via a Twitter post. He would tweet out artwork of Street Fighter VI's Luke, thanking all of the series' previous so-called main protagonists, with of course Abel being present in this picture. So I promise you that I am not going mad here. So after reviewing Abel's appearances in Street Fighter 4, 5 and Cross Tekken, do you think this character is as bland, unremarkable and boring as I first accused him to be? Well, mostly. Design wise, I think his appearance makes him look as dull as dishwater, which I guess makes sense for a literal android, but not for the poster boy of Street Fighter 4. Thinking about it, Street Fighter 3 and Street Fighter 6 marketing would both be heavily built around Alex and Luke with both figures appearing on the front covers of their respective games. The even more generic looking Abel though has never been positioned in the same way. But one thing I will compliment him on though is his story is a little more interesting. Yes, a nice animal loving android who has aligned himself with the forces of good is a blatant Dragon Ball Z ripoff. But his story of self discovery to me is a lot more interesting than Alex or Luke's ones. So he wins in that department at least. Overall though, I think it would be hard to argue a case for this character being one of the more memorable fighters from Capcom, with it being even more silly to think that Abel was apparently the main protagonist in a Street Fighter game. Abel is laughably bad really, which pleases me that they pushed him more towards a comic relief role in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, so at least there is some sort of silver lining to all of this. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, you might want to watch my previous uploads like this, criticising Luke and Alex. Yeah, cheerio.